Hey guys, so today we've got a different kind of video for you. In the past, you've seen us talk about our load bank and you've seen us talk about generators, but tonight we have three 500 kW generators for this customer. They wanted us to go through and load bank and we'll make sure they didn't have any problems. The temperature of the summer is getting warmer. These three generators run together, paralleled. They have to be ready to go up to say 400 kW load but they're only sitting at like 150 kW each because they're backing each other up. So if they lost one, each one of them had 100 kW load, and then you go down to two, then that's 300 kW, so they'd have to be able to pick up one and a half times or 150 kW. Or if they lost two of them, then one would run at 300 kW. So we basically load banked them all at 400 kW. Some people may ask why we would do this on this particular generator set. In a diesel generator that's not under full load all the time, there's a condition called wet stacking. And what that means is, is that like oily soot is formed inside the engine or inside the exhaust system, which is basically unburnt diesel fuel and carbon from the combustion process. So this sooty mix, it'll build up in there. And because the generators are only running at 100 kW, say 25% or 20% of their rated load, the exhaust temperatures never go up. So what we're also doing is we're putting these things under a stress and we're driving that exhaust temperature up and we're burning off all that wet stack. So we don't want the generators to wet stack. In severe cases, the wet stack can catch on fire and it burns like a jet engine and you can mess up your exhaust system or your turbos or all kinds of problems. It's just not good. So one thing the customer wants us to do is load bank and wet stack, get all that wet stack out of it and get it up and it burns it kind of clean, kind of cleans it out. So it lets it clear out all that soot and unburnt diesel fuel that gets left over when a generator, a large diesel generator that is designed for a 500 kW load is only doing 50 or 100 or none or just idling, it's bad for it and this helps clear that up. And, and people ask, well then, is this a bad design? It's not really a bad design because if you want this one to end redundancy or end to one redundancy, meaning that you know if you say you had a design load of say 300 kW, and you put three generators on it, then each one's only doing like 100 kW. So you're kind of forcing yourself to run these larger generators at a third or a quarter of their load if you're doing this one to end redundancy to make sure you don't have any problems. And these particular generators are utilized in like national broadcast situations so that the power can't go off. So one of the penalties that you do is if you have a generator that can back up another generator that's parallel together, it has to be large enough to take the load if one of them drops away. So that kind of creates this wet stack situation because you're running a much larger than you need generator uh, against a smaller load for redundancy, but that's what's required for redundancy. These three generators, these three 500s are parallel together. And you've seen videos we've done, movie quad generators, two or three or four of them together. We've got a, a video on this channel of a couple of two megs, four million watts of generation where we parallel them to together, we've got whole videos that talk about parallel and, and how that works. So that's kind of a neat concept because you don't get a blink, you don't get a brown out, and you don't have to have a whole bunch of sophisticated electronics associated with like a UPS or something like that to get that redundancy in the field. We did a whole video, I guess Stephen can link it up there as well, about the load bank. And this is a neat application about this particular load bank. If you go back and watch the other video, we might not have made it clear. But we can connect 208 23 phase or 480 277 three phase to the same load bank and it auto negotiates it. And some of the shots on the screen, if you watch real close, it might say low voltage option. It means when the load bank connected up, it saw the power and it has relays and stuff in there that switches so that it gives the right power to the control board. It rewires the fan to low voltage instead of high voltage and vice versa, depending on how much voltage we connect here. So that's another neat feature about the load bank. So when you get up to a generator that big, if you guys are familiar with smaller generators, they have a voltage selection switch. But when you get into these kind of currents and amperages, you can't have a switch so you have to go in there and change a bunch of load banking uh, configurations. So you notice we have all the cables connected up because these generators operate at 208120. So we're making certain that we load bank them the way they operate. Well, that's what this customer wanted to do. He didn't want us to switch them over to 480. So we have to leave them at 208. So that means that 400 kW, we're looking at probably nearly a thousand amps a leg. So that's why we have multiple cable runs per leg. So we load bank them up. Pretty interesting to run all three generators for an hour. Probably takes about two hours the time you get set up, this many cables. 
you have to bring the generator up to temperature because you're not wanting to put the load on it immediately. So I always like the water temps to be around 165, 170 before we start applying the loads to it and then ramp in. And then we're looking for a lot of things. On one of them, we found a water leak on the top of the radiator hose. You know, that's something that didn't show up, but inside the generator, we found where they've been adding a little bit of antifreeze here and there. So it's evaporating away. But we put under big load, we can find the problem and, and identify it. And in that way, our customer will have good, reliable power and know their systems will work. Some people ask, these are uh, CAT generators. They have the CAT C15, so that kind of gives you an idea of like in the marine world and in the different kind of industries because a C15 in a big truck make 800 horsepower. So that's about what it need to be, 750 watts per horsepower. So it probably need to make 800 horsepower to be 500 kW, so. Uh, you guys noticed that I had a meter, a fluke meter amp clamp to one of these cables. You know, it's kind of a sanity check, kind of a backup. At one point, you know, I said we had about 1,000 amps of load or 1,200 amps of load. Well, we know that this cable is good for 400 amps and there's, we have four of them here, but some of these generators had four and some of them only had three. So if we only had three connectors at 400 amps, that's only 1,200 amps. So I just, it's sort of like a dummy check for me and to kind of verify everything too. But I amp clamp just one leg of one phase of one part of the leg to make sure that we never exceeded 400 amps. It was just a dummy check for me. It's kind of neat to see the application of some of the equipment that we featured in other videos and kind of putting it together for kind of a day in the life or a requirement of why you load bank and why you do that. Thanks for watching. Go over there and hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, it helps us a lot. If you'd like to leave us a comment or, you know, give us a question or something, we try to answer all the comments. That really helps us out. Hit the like button, that keeps the videos coming to you when we put out a new one. And we appreciate you following along. We've got a, a nice set of videos now about generators, load banks, power cables, all those kind of things. Go check us out, we appreciate you watching.